In this video, we are going to see uh, the shortest job first scheduling algorithm in the non-preemptive mode, but with different arrival time. In the previous video, I told you how this SJF algorithm works in a non-preemptive mode with zero arrival time. So in this video, we are just going to see the same algorithm in the same mode with different arrival time. So the, uh, so the problem is given here, PID, uh, process we have from P1 to P4 and arrival time is given. But here, if you see, the arrival time is different. In the previous uh, um, video, when we saw it, it was with the same arrival time as zero. But here, the arrival time differs for each and every process which it is coming. And the burst time is also given here. As you know, this SJF depends on the shortest burst time. So the process which has the shortest burst time will be given the CPU first. So we'll see how this one works. So as you know, first we are going to draw the Gantt chart. Okay, we'll start drawing the Gantt chart. As you see here, the process P1 is the first to arrive. The process P1 is the first to arrive. So as you know, P1 is arriving at the zeroth millisecond. So when the P1 is executing, when the P1 is executing at the same time, at the first millisecond and the second millisecond, at the third millisecond, all the process are coming in and uh, coming inside the queue. Now you see, because it is in a non-preemptive mode, we can't able to um, stop the process that is executing, even though the process P2 arrives at first millisecond with the uh, smallest burst time when compared to the uh, process P1, because it is executing at the non-preemptive mode, even though the process P2 is having the less burst time, we are not going to terminate the process and take the process P2 because it is working in the non-preemptive mode. It will finish that particular process and then only it will move to the next process here. So as you see, P1 executes, it keeps on executing um, until eight milliseconds, until eight milliseconds. During that time, all the other process are waiting there in the queue, waiting for the CPU. So now um, I have rest of the three process, P2, P3, and P4 waiting for the CPU. Now, depending upon the burst time, it is going to find out which can be given the CPU. So now you see P1 is completed. Now P2 is having four, P3 nine, and P4 is five. So P2 will be given the CPU. So P2 will be given the CPU. It will be executing till four milliseconds, right? Eight plus four, it will be 12. And the next one to come in will be your P4 because P4 is having the um, smallest burst time when compared to P3. So it, it executes till five milliseconds. So 12 plus five, it will be 17. Until 17 millisecond, your P4 will execute. And finally, the process P3 will execute. So 17 plus nine, it will be 26. Now the Gantt chart is done. Once the Gantt chart is done, as you know, we need to find out the completion time. Okay, we need to find out the completion time for each and every process. So process P1 gets completed at 8 and process P2 when it is getting completed at 12. And then your process P3, it is getting completed at 26 and your process P4, it is getting completed at 17. Okay, so your uh, completion time is over. And the next one which you have to find out is the turnaround time. So you know the formula for your turnaround time. Okay, so what is the formula? Turnaround time is nothing but the difference between your uh, um, uh, your uh, completion time and the arrival time. Okay, it is the difference between your completion time minus the arrival time. So find out, so you have the uh, completion time and you have the arrival time. So eight minus zero, it will be eight. 12 minus 1, it is 11. 26 minus 2, it will be 24. And 17 minus 3, it will be 14. Okay, I have found out my turnaround time. And the next one to find out is my waiting time. 
for finding the waiting time, I should know the turnaround time and the burst time. I have those values available. So it will be uh, the difference between your turnaround time minus your burst time. So as you see here, um, turnaround, uh, sorry, this is the waiting time. Waiting time for your process P1 is zero because P1 arrives first, right? So it is zero. And for your P2, it is and for your P2, what is the time? How much time it is waiting for? P2, it, uh, for your P2, it is seven. And for your P3, it is 15. That is 24 minus nine, it is 15. And then for your P4, it is nine, right? For P4, it is nine. Okay, so I found out the waiting time. Once I have found out the waiting time, I need to find out the average waiting time. As you know, average waiting time is adding all these things divided by the number of process. So it will be zero plus seven plus 15 plus nine, okay, divided by four. So it will be 7.75 milliseconds. And next one to find out is the average turnaround time. So add everything. So 8 plus 11 plus 24 plus 14 divided by 4. So it will be 14.25 milliseconds. So this is how your SJF algorithm uh, in a non-preemptive mode with different arrival time works okay so in our next video we are going to see the same algorithm in the preemptive mode with different arrival times we'll see in the next video thank you